I think they said they had some technical difficulties, so. Okay, my apologies. Uh, yeah, why don't we get started and I'll work on the technical difficulties in the background here um, while we get going. Sorry for the delay, everybody. Uh, no worries. <laughs> Are we ready to go then? Yeah, you're ready to go. Excellent. Hi, everyone. My name is Brenda, and I'm from Gorilla Garden Adventures. And I think that everybody should garden. And apparently during COVID, a lot of you embrace the whole house plants uh, as part of maybe your mental wellness. So since COVID started, the price of house plants has gone up phenomenally. So I'm going to show you some ways that you can get some really cool house plants, unusual house plants on the cheap. So how I got started growing house plants was in the late 70s, early 80s, I came across this book and it was called The After Dinner Gardener. Now, this book is out of print, but if you're ever in a secondhand shop or a bookstore that sells used books, I definitely recommend it. It's a hilarious book about this guy who, who grows all these different plants. So that's how I got started on my houseplant journeys when I was in my 20s many years ago. So one of the best ways to get inexpensive houseplants is to propagate them, either by seed or by cuttings. Now, you can do this with almost any kind of plants. One of the best books that I found is, uh, I have the, it's called Plant Propagation. Now, this is by the American Horticultural Society. Uh, society. The actual hardcover book costs about $100, but you can buy it from the, uh, the digital copy for about 20 some odd dollars. And you can also get this from the library. Now, this not only does house plants, you can look up whatever kind of house plant, it tells you how to propagate it, but it also does vegetables, fruit trees. Cannot recommend this highly enough. So this is something that every gardener should look up or try to see if they can get a copy of. However, for today, we're not going to worry so much about that because we want to do something a little bit on the budget. So one of the first things that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to look at soil because whatever you plant your house plants in, you're going to need to get some soil. Now, soil is very specific to whatever you're growing. Now, I have a few examples here. So, this is a premium cactus mix. Now, if you're planting cactuses, definitely you want to buy it specific for cactuses. Also, an African violet mix. And there's usually for most things, I buy something called Sunshine Number no. One. It does come in big bales, or I like Sunshine Number no. Three. Those are my favorite kind of soils to use. However, if you prefer to use Miracle Grow or whatever, as long as it says it's for containers and house plants and it's sterilized, then you're pretty much good to go for house plants. Now, you're going to want containers. Now, these you can get brand new, or if you're a little bit on a budget, you can definitely look on Marketplace, Craigslist, uh, secondhand stores, and pick them up relatively inexpensive. You're going to want to spray a little bit of bleach in them and wash them because you don't know if the last person maybe had some fungus or maybe some bug issues. So you definitely want to sterilize them and wash them out a bit. And what I do is this is just a coffee filter. I buy a package of them at the dollar store. And sometimes there's holes in the bottom of the container, which you also want to make sure there's holes. It'll cover up the holes and it'll stop the dirt from coming out of your pots. So definitely something to consider. 
So once you've considered your soil, you've got your pots, you've filled them up full of dirt, then you're going to kind of look at what you're going to plant. Now, we're going to look at unusual things. So some of the ways that you can get sources for what you're going to plant are seeds or cuttings. So some of the seeds you can buy at uh, either online or sometimes I join Facebook groups and I get some free seeds that way as well. Or I go to seed swaps in my local area, joining your gar local garden club, that's always very helpful. So Mackenzie Seeds here, they have something called passion flower seeds. I mean, as you can see, it's a dollar eighty nine. There's probably enough for at least a dozen house plants. So that's a really inexpensive way for you to get seeds to grow house plants. Now, this is called Malabar spinach. It's actually an outdoor plant that you can grow as a vegetable. However, I found that it makes a really, really nice house plant. And people would come into my house and say, what is that? And I'm like, oh, it's Malabar spinach. And it is edible. So again, there's got to be probably 50 packet, 50 seeds in this. So if you rent or you move somewhere and you don't have a permanent place, when it comes time to moving, when you have house plants, it can be a lot of work. This way you can give it away. You can just trash it and start another one very easily. And again, this was like $2.19. So that's pretty inexpensive. I've also got some pink polka, polka dot plants. I've got a bunch of cactus seeds. Uh, definitely, that's why I have the cactus soil. So these are things that you can use. I actually got peyote cactus. This was from an herb specialist. African violet seeds. Again, these are this one was more expensive uh, because very it's a variegated one. So this is a very unusual kind of African violet. And one of the big trends in house plants are philodendrons and monstera plants. Again, I've got these uh, from W. H. Perone. Uh, they're a Canadian company. Definitely, you can start house plants like those. And again, I've got cactus seeds. I've got tropical hibiscus seeds. These were all free from online seed swaps from Facebook house plant groups. So this is something you know. If you buy a big package of seeds that have like fifty seeds in them, and you're not going to plant them all, you can trade them for something else. So this is a really good way to get additional seeds for other things that you have. Now, the After Dinner Gardener book, what it taught me was how to take normal fruit that you would find in your produce department and grow house plants out of it. Now, this is a dragon fruit. It was uh, $3.99, I think, at the grocery store. Now, if you cut this open, the inside is absolutely full of seeds, and I'll show you here. So when you look, each one of those little seeds will grow an actual dragon fruit, which is a kind of cactus. Now, I would use that cactus mix to do that. And what they look like when they're done this is one that I've actually saved from seed, and I grew this. This is an actual dragon fruit seed plant, and I just took the seeds, I put them through a mesh, little strainer like this. The actual fruit tastes like nothing, but I didn't want to waste it, so I just squished all the, the dragon fruit, the white interior, which is actually the fruit part, and I just put that in the freezer and I use it in smoothies. The black seeds, I just rinsed off and then I sprinkled a whole bunch on cactus oil and a little clay pot. The cactuses do like little clay pots. And this has been for about 
about maybe 18 months. And I just sprinkled them in here. And this is like the cutest little thing. Now I'm gonna transplant them and try transplanting a few individual ones because the flowers on these look amazing. I'm hoping I can make it flower, but uh, if not, that is just the cutest little plant. It cost me really next to nothing because I ate the fruit and I've got a really cute little inexpensive plant. Now, the other thing you can get, prickly pear cactus. Now, I do have seeds for this uh, that someone had given me, which is great. But this same thing, you're going to cut this open. Again, you're going to use that cactus mix. And I think this was $1.49. But when you look in here, there is like a gazillion seeds in here. So again, you're going to have seeds to plant for your prickly pear cactus, and you're going to have some to trade. So it's definitely worth going on Facebook, joining some of the Facebook uh, houseplant groups, and trading those for other plants. I've got verbera seeds, daisy seeds. I've got uh, some other uh, uh, cactus seeds from there. So it's definitely worthwhile. And again, I would just take that, put it through my mesh, save the, the juice or the interior fruit part, which is edible. And I would just put that in my freezer and use it up in smoothies. So those are, those are really inexpensive ways. Um, something else you can use is, this is organic turmeric. It comes in a bag. And if you look here, it's just been sitting in a windowsill and it'll start to get, I don't know if you can see that, little green, root, green roots. So I'm gonna plant this just in some sunshine number one mix, uh, just a normal container potting soil mix in a six inch container. And I'll plant it inside as a house plant. By next spring, I'll kick it outside and I will have, I will have it. Sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> so I will have a ton of turmeric for myself, you know, to use in pickles or some people make tea out of it. And it's quite a nice looking plant. You can also get ginger. I do recommend getting the organic one just because they seem to sprout a little bit easier. So I would just put this bag on my windowsill until it starts to get sprouts and then I would plant it. The ginger actually turns out pretty nice. So the ginger plant, This is a ginger plant right here. Now it needs to be transplanted in a bigger pot. Uh, it's just a root. Again, I took it, took it out. And if it gets too big and, and bulky like this, I will actually pull that one out and there'll be more that'll sprout. Now this is totally edible. I will overwinter this and then in the spring, again, when it gets warm enough, like probably June or July, I'll kick it outside, put it in a bigger pot. And then in the fall, I empty the pot, I'll put, and I'll, I'll harvest it. Fresh ginger is nothing like what you buy in the store. It's amazing. And during the growing season, like even in the winter when it's like this, I will pull off the leaves. Now, I wish you had smell of vision, but it smells exactly like ginger. So if I'm making some chicken broth, I will throw a couple of these in and it gives it kind of like a, that faux flavor for like faux broth, Vietnamese cooking. It's amazing. So this is so easy to grow and it looks very tropical and so simple to grow. And like you, sometimes if you go in the grocery store, they'll have a sale bin somewhere and it's like the the stuff that's not so um, fresh maybe, and it's usually at a discount. Those are good places to look for that turmeric or ginger, or maybe some of the prickly pear cactus, definitely. And the riper it is, the better the seeds are. So definitely don't overlook those kind of things when you're grocery shopping. It's a really inexpensive source for 
for your house plant seeds. The other thing you can look at is lemons, lemons, oranges, grapefruits, um, those kind of things are really easy to save seeds from. Now, usually when I, I bought a bag of Meyer lemons, so I cut them open, I squeezed all the juice out of it and I saved the seeds. Again, I just freeze the juice for later use. And then I just put them in a paper, wet paper towel and I've got them in like a little Ziploc bag. Now what happens is they sprout. Now at this point, I'm gonna transplant these. See if I can get it here. So these are like the little seeds and they've sprouted. This will actually start lemon seeds and it'll have an actual lemon plant. Now, some people said that it won't actually get lemons, but it makes an absolutely gorgeous house plant. Now, I do have some blood orange ones here that I've started. Now, these were started maybe four months ago. So they grow fairly slowly, but they are really, they end up being really gorgeous little plants. Now, there's grapefruit. Now, not all citrus will have seeds. So it's, sometimes it's kind of hit and miss. You'll buy some oranges and they'll have no seeds. But if you do come across some seeds while you're eating your, your citrus fruit, definitely try planting them. Do not dry them out. As soon as you come across the seeds, put them in a paper towel to sprout and then just check them. As soon as they get the little sprouts, then you can transfer them to dirt. The one downside about citrus fruits is they do tend to get uh, pests. They tend to get uh, woolly aphids and sometimes spider mites. So it's one of those things that it's not a matter of if you get pests, it's a matter of when you get pests, when you have citrus. So you might want to invest in some uh, pesticide and you definitely want to use according to recommendations, go to your local garden center and get the appropriate pesticide for whatever product you're getting. Now I've also used passion fruit. Uh, I found it Superstore has really unusual fruits and vegetables. Uh, so I did start a passion fruit, even though I bought seeds, I had started a seed, a passion fruit from a seed. Now, this is what it's like so far. Let's see if I can get it here. Uh, this is an eight inch pot and the leaves look incredibly healthy. Uh, I'm going to have to transplant this and put a taller trellis with it. This one's probably about maybe four months. And I've got this beautiful house plant here. Now this will flower with the appropriate amount of light. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about light options later on. But I mean, this was passion fruit was same thing. I use it in my smoothies. I get some free seeds. I've got one here. It's, it's an, a really beautiful plant. Now, if I can get it to flower, that's incredible. I'm gonna have to use some, some fertilizer to make it flower. And again, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Now, sometimes when you have houseplants, there may be things that you don't really think about houseplants and houseplants that are edible, especially with the price of groceries right now, it's, it's kind of a, a thing you'd want to try and save wherever you can. There's these special kind of tomatoes and they're called micro tomatoes and there's different varieties and they easily grow in an eight inch pot. Now, this is one that I have, it's called bonsai. Now, this is as big as it gets. And I've been growing this inside. I grow them all winter inside and you can tell there's some little tomatoes here. This is as big as it gets. It'll grow in a windowsill in front of a bright light window. Once you have these little tomatoes, there's a company called Renaissance Seeds is where I got the original tomatoes from, but there are other companies that sell them. So again, uh, I've also got some really unusual ones called uh, Helms Gelb. It's a yellow one. 
And that was all through a Facebook group again, a tomato group. I cannot stress enough. There are so many groups that you can get involved and trade some seeds for really inexpensive. And like I probably get about maybe two or three pints of tomatoes per one plant. So, you know, when you look at $3.99, $4.99 for a pint of tomatoes, and I can grow these all winter with the appropriate amount of light. So this goes a long ways and it's a really nice looking little plant. So something and you can grow inside or outside. So it's definitely worthwhile. If I was going to save seed from these, I would let them get really ripe. Like I would put this on my counter, let it get really, really ripe, almost to the point of rotten. And then I would cut it open. I would squeeze out the seeds into like a little glass of water and then just keep putting it through a strainer till there's no more gel on the seeds. Let them dry out. And then I never have to buy seeds again, ever. Like, so this is the, the really good way to get yourself some, some fresh vegetables over the winter. And I mean, you don't really think of a tomato as a houseplant, but it works really well. Now, this is something called cardamom. Now, this is quite a nice looking houseplant. And where I got this was if you go in the herb section of a garden center, uh, maybe not this time of year, but usually in the spring at some of the higher end garden centers, you can buy a little four inch pot of cardamom for about four dollars. Now, I just keep using this and I cut it back and the leaves again, I wish you had I had smell of vision. The leaves smell amazing. And again, I'll just cut off the leaves. I'll add them with some of those ginger leaves to a pot of chicken stock. It smells amazing. It is like Thai food that you make at home. And it's incredibly, it's an incredibly pretty house plant. Like, and it doesn't really seem to get pests. It's pretty hardy. And if I want a piece, I can just pull a piece out and start another plant. It is that easy. So again, these are things that you know you might want to look at, look out at. Now I have seen cardamom seeds in the store in the in the spice aisle. Uh, someone said that on one of my groups said that you can plant them and it will grow. I haven't tried it myself, but it is on my list of things to try this winter. So cardamom. Definitely something worth trying. Now, sometimes, you know, we have all buy groceries and especially produce and we mean to actually plant it or, or eat it, but uh, it goes a little wrinkly and then you may not want to eat it. Uh, I love sweet potatoes, but sometimes they start growing little roots and they kind of end up looking like like this okay maybe you have and this is just a normal sweet potato so i'll put it in a container i'll fill the container halfway with water and these leaves will actually get quite nice and i know it looks kind of ugly now but these little pieces you can even take them and like where they're attached here just break them off like a little piece like that. Now, here's a few that I've already planted. As they're not even planted, they're just in the water in a little vase. Now, this is such a cute thing. You could have a bunch of these on a tabletop or in a window. And same thing, I've just pulled it off and I'll just stick it in water. Now in a couple days, it'll start to sprout leaves like this. So this is a very easy way. And once you started doing it, I'll show you here, it starts getting roots. At this point, I could plant them in dirt. And you can go to the garden center and you can buy a little, maybe a four inch pot and it's uh, $12.99 for a little pot. And seriously, it is like no bigger than this. 
and super easy and they grow they they're heat seekers so they're not going to overwinter outside but inside they make the most incredible plants and especially in a hanging basket so this one here it's it hasn't started forming roots in the bottom but once i put it in water it'll start forming roots and some places say you should cut them you know like into pieces my best bet for this has been just wait till it has roots and i planted the whole thing in a hanging basket now i did this maybe in uh maybe may i'm gonna say so i'm gonna show you what this so may june july august september so in five months it went from this to this I mean, this is like massive. And this is like, people come over and they're like, what's that plant? That's awesome. I'm like, oh, it's a sweet potato. They're like, no, that hanging one. I'm like, yeah, it's a sweet potato. Four months. Like this planter is probably 14 inches across at least. And like, like it's starting to get really long. Now, like apparently the leaves, you can eat the leaves. I don't think they're very appetizing, but you know, apparently you can eat the leaves. What I do is I like to start them like this. I treat them like a house plant. I'll overwinter it. And next winter, uh, in the spring, when it starts to warm up, as soon as it gets really hot and stays hot, not spring, but more summer, I will plant it in a big pot. And then I'll be able to, and I'll put it in my greenhouse, I'll empty it, and I'll have a whole bunch of sweet potatoes to actually eat. But in the meantime, I've got a really awesome plant. And, uh, and it doesn't take long to get that big. I mean, this is so simple, and it's just so easy, like so easy. This is stuff that, you know, you may not want to eat it when it has all these little sprouts. you got something growing in your cupboard why not turn it into a fabulous house plant and then if you can make it live and you have the space to grow it outside in a big pot then maybe you'll end up with some extra sweet potatoes so it's a very inexpensive way to uh to get more plants and uh like i said if it's edible all the better um i have a friend who actually was eating an apple and he had seen my house plant collection from food scraps so he he was eating an apple and he thought hey there's some seeds in there i'm going to try it well so far he has two little apple trees are they ever going to get apples who knows but he lives in an apartment there's only a balcony and he was able to have some really cool plants on his balcony for he's buying groceries anyways so it's really inexpensive and people are very uh interested in what exactly he has growing so it's definitely uh worthwhile to do now one of the books that i would recommend there's this uh, book it's called growing tasty tropical plants okay so lemon citrons grapefruit kumquats uh i'm still looking for kumquats in the store uh passion fruit so there's all these different things that you can that you can grow now the reason i recommend this book now i don't get any money for any of these recommendations and i will be sending out a cheat sheet with all the the links on the books and the names you can get this from the library originally i had rent i had got it for free at the library but uh, it was such a good book that i actually purchased it I think it was like maybe $20, but you can get it from free from most libraries. Now, the nice thing about this is like, here's the dragon fruit. Not only does it show you this, the whole pictures, but it also tells you how to care for it, potential problems, what kind of bugs you're going to look for, what kind of light it wants and growing conditions. Like this is a really, really good book if you're going to grow uh, tropical plants, especially from the grocery store. So I highly recommend this book. And I said, again, from the library, really worthwhile. Uh, sometimes you'll get books from 
some of the retro books. Like this is a book. It's uh, the Women's Day Book of House Plants. It's from 1965. Now, inside, it has the most gorgeous, uh, like, drawings of all the different plants. Now, it does have a little section on how to propagate them. So the propagation is absolutely awesome. I mean, this was like at a flea market for 50 cents or whatever. So, you know, even if it's an older book, you can find some really inexpensively that have how to easily propagate different house plants. The only uh, disclaimer I would say is sometimes it will tell you about different pests. And in 1965, of course, they allowed way different pesticides than are allowed today. Um, you know, DDT, yeah, that's outlawed now. So, you know, but for propagation, really good books. So, you know, definitely when you're looking around, nobody really wants books. They want digital stuff. And digital stuff is good. I definitely use, like I said, social media and Google is my friend. But, you know, if you come across some books and you look through, definitely there's usually some really good books on that. Now, again, you know, where you've got some plants growing, that's great. But you're going to need to feed them because you don't want to starve your house plants. That's kind of cruel. They're going to need to eat. So you can, there's different kinds of fertilizers you can have. Now, everyone has what they like to use, and it depends on how much mass and how much storage space you have. There's a lot of different options. Some house plants, especially the tropical ones and the unusual tropical ones, need specific fertilizers. So I'll just grab some here. So this is citrus and avocado food, okay, 10-6-4. This, someone had given this to me because I knew I was growing citrus food, and this was someone from my garden club. If you have a local garden club, definitely worth joining. You get all kinds of advice, some really great people. They're always willing to trade some seeds or give you free fertilizer. I prefer using organic, but if someone's giving me free fertilizer, I'm not going to turn it down because it's going to end up in a landfill anyway, so I might as well use it. Cactus, it uh, definitely needs its own type of fertilizer. So because I'm starting to got so many cactus seeds, that is something that I actually did purchase. For any of the green kind of plants like cardamom or or those kind of things. I have a little worm farm that I have in my in my hallway and it's in a bin and they produce this uh, worm compost and I use that in my in my plants and also there's there's like a liquid that's that they have that I call worm juice and I use that as a as a natural fertilizer works really well now if you're you know some fertilizers like the liquid ones here you're gonna mix with water and maybe that's kind of a hassle and you don't really want to do that um if you're kind of a lazy gardener you can get these organic little fertilizer sticks you just stick them in the dirt easy peasy no work i mean they're easy and you can buy these at the dollar store so you know for something that's organic easy peasy easy storage like even if you're in an apartment you can store this in a drawer very easy you just stick them in the dirt it has the instructions on the back again any fertilizers always follow instructions and you know if you have pets or children or whatever definitely you want to keep that safe um there are there are many different options for little plant spikes i prefer like i said the organic ones but if someone's giving me free fertilizer i'm not gonna say no 
Um, some of the other fertilizers. This is a granular fertilizer. I usually prefer granular fertilizers to liquid because you just sprinkle it on. It is like a little pellet. And can you see there? All right, there. So they're just little pellets and they self release. So once every, you know, three months or so, you put a little sprinkle again, it has all the directions. Um, this one's for palms and certain tropical plants. So this is, again, this was given to me uh, for free, so I'm not going to turn it down. But there is organic versions of this that I do use. Gay is a really good organic brand. Anything that I'm going to eat, I try to use organic. That's just a preference. But you do you. However, as long as you're feeding them and not starving your plants, it's a good thing. So, like, these are usually about um, 12 to $20, but if sometimes you can get them for free, and the other thing is, right now, if there's little garden centers, like at the, some of the big box stores that have garden centers just for the season, and then they close in the fall, now's a good time to be looking for your fertilizers, because I got some organic uh, pelleted fertilizer that's uh, for hanging baskets and flowers, and I got it for five dollars. So now is a really good time to be looking for different garden things as the garden centers are are kind of slowing down. So fertilizer is definitely an option. Is not an option. You need fertilizer to make your plants healthy. Uh, to be honest, though, that sweet potato plant, I have given no fertilizer this year. That has just been straight water. But over the winter, I am going to have to add fertilizer. And I said, I'm kind of a lazy gardener, so I prefer the pelleted. It's like a slow release. You sprinkle it on, and then you don't have to worry about it for three months. So that's uh, something that you definitely want to do. Now, when it comes to pests, uh, you can spend money on something called uh, insecticidal soap. Basically, it's just soap and water. So instead of spending the $12, $13, just use just soap and water to try and wash off things. I have a lot of house plants in my house, like a lot. So when I bring a new house plant home, I tend to, I have a little, uh, a greenhouse that I got from Ikea and I kind of isolate it and I spray it especially if it's something that uh, that I don't know exactly what it's been because sometimes they'll spray it before you get it so you inspect it all and you don't see any any bugs but then 10 days later there's eggs in there and they hatch and now they've infected all your house plants and then it's costly and time consuming to try and get rid of them so I tend to, if I buy a new house plant that I'm going to take cuttings from, I put it aside, I isolate it, and I spray it down with actual insecticide. Best to buy from a garden center that get, because uh, some insecticides, like African violets, you, if you spray the leaves, because they're kind of furry, it will damage them. So make sure you're getting the right kind of insecticide for what kind of bugs you have. If you're growing citrus, uh, it's a good idea. It, like I said, it's not a matter of if you get bugs, it's when you get bugs. So, and spider mites are a huge thing. So even though I'm not a big fan of pesticides, I will use something called Endol because it does all kinds of bugs. And I do it once and then seven to 10 days later, I do a second batch. It kills all stages and it's good to go. Now I'll show you what that looks like. This is just a uh, Safer's Endol. It's an indoor plant insecticide. Again, you know, I spray it outside, make sure I get it in all the crevices, everywhere else. Then it's isolated, either in my laundry room if it's too big, or in a in a separate little greenhouse. And then 
seven days, then I rinse it off, I give it a second spray, then I can move it in with the rest of my house plants. So something definitely that, you know, you might want to invest in. And that's why this book, The Growing Tasty Plants, Tropical Plants, that's why this is a good book, because inside each plant that you look up, it'll have a list of what bugs are there. So you kind of know what you're inspecting. When you're watering your plants, like maybe it's every week or whatever it is, it's always good to do an inspection. Wipe off the outside of the pot, wipe off underneath, because that's where some bugs like to hide. So it's definitely worthwhile to, to uh, look it up. And like I said, this, it's easily available from, from the, the library if, if it's not accessible. And like I said, Google is really helpful as well. So those are some of the things that you can do. And like, you know, let your imagination run wild. Like when I'll go into, uh, like Superstore is one of my favorite places to source uh, unusual seeds for houseplants. So uh, right now I'm trying lemongrass. So far I haven't got any roots, but uh, I was on one of my houseplant groups and someone bought some from the superstore. They put them in a glass of water. And then once it got roots, they planted it. And I love Thai food. So, you know, I'm, I'm really excited about trying to grow some lemongrass. I've also got some seeds from one of my other houseplant seed trading groups. So I'm kind of excited to see if I could actually grow it. And it's, uh, there's other things like I want to try kumquats. I haven't tried those yet, but really unusual. Kins Grow Farms, they're, uh, they have a lot of grocery stores, uh, produce stores. They usually have a little bin at the back with, uh, you know, maybe some overripe little fruit. Definitely look, don't overlook those things because usually you can pick them up so inexpensively and grow something or even those little sweet potatoes. Grow yourself a really nice hanging basket. I mean, these are incredible ways to get houseplants really inexpensively. So those are just a few of the ways. Um, sometimes I post stuff on, I have my own Facebook group, Gorilla Garden Adventures, and that's G U. E-R-R-I-L-L-A, Garden Adventures. I also have a website, gorillagardenadventures.com. And I post different uh, articles on different things I'm trying, what kind of adventures I'm having, what I'm, what I'm having success with. So, you know, it's definitely, if, you're, if you want to be following me, or sometimes I share where there's different seed swaps happening, Definitely something, you know, to see where you're doing. And I'm going to be sending out a, a seed, a, a reference list with where some of the different seeds I got, uh, what the different books are, where you can get them, and the titles and the authors so that you can grow your own houseplants for literally pennies. Um, you know, the, the, the most expensive part is going to be your soil. Your containers, they can be a little bit expensive. You can get, uh, right now, if there's a London Drugs where you live, they have the most beautiful ceramic pots on sale right now. Like for like three to $10 for beautiful ceramic pots. Uh, you know, check, like I said, Craigslist Marketplace is an incredible place to look for those kind of things. You can... Sometimes you can get house plants really inexpensively on on uh, marketplace. The only thing is uh, sometimes they might have again bugs or or things that maybe you don't want to bring into your house. So if you do that, be sure to isolate it. So these are different things that you can do. Uh, is anyone excited about uh, starting their own house plants now? Yes. Okay. Excellent. If you do, you know, definitely if you, if you have success or you've tried this and, and it's going well, definitely feel free to, to drop me a line on my Facebook page uh, with a picture because I love it when I can inspire people to embrace gardening in whatever form that takes and to teach people that it doesn't cost a lot of money to actually have a fabulous garden, whether it be indoors or out. 
Is there any questions or anything I can help anybody with? Well, thank you so much, everyone. And uh, just one other thing, if you're worried about lighting, because maybe if you have, a, a, you know, you live in an apartment and you don't have great lighting, there is lighting things that you can do. One of the things is at uh, Home Depot, Canadian Tire, whatever, there's these little bulbs. They just fit in a regular lamp, like a gooseneck lamp or anything. They're LED, so they're very low cost. Like if you want to grow one of those little tomatoes, you're going to need lighting that is, is going to be conducive to it flowering and to producing tomatoes. So you can buy these for like 10 to $12 pretty much. And they just screw in a regular bulb. You can also attach a timer. If it's tomatoes, you want it on 12 hours on at least 12 to 16 hours on, you know, eight hours off, that kind of thing. So that's really helpful. Or if your budget's a little bit better, you can get these. They're called blue lights. They're again, LED. They have uh, little cords that attach them so that you can detach a whole bunch like in a daisy chain. I think I paid like maybe $10 a piece for these on Amazon. So they're, and again, I've got them on a timer. So they turn off and turn on, they're on shelves. And I've got like two great big, huge tall shelves full of them. So if you don't have a window, definitely an option for you. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Apologies for the tech issues at the beginning. Um, and yeah, uh, thanks, everybody. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, end this now if there's no questions or comments. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.